Hey guys, so last week I went to Guatemala for a service trip with a scholarship program called Hamilton Scholars. What year is that? All right, so this is our, are we 20, what year are we? 2016. We are the 2016 Hammy cohort. This is year two with the Hamilton Scholars program. So we're out here in Guatemala. And there's some, I guess reflecting on this trip, instead of just kind of showing you guys all the footage and all the things and activities that we did, I thought it'd be more beneficial to kind of reflect on that. And so one of the main things that we did throughout the week was teach kids English. And throughout this whole process, it taught me a lot of things. It's funny because our job was to teach these kids English, but I believe they taught us a hell of a lot more than we could have possibly taught them. <laughs> And one of those things is just authenticity and a lot of genuineness in these kids. When they were playing soccer or when they were in recess or when they were coloring, whatever activity these kids partook in, other kids just kind of joined in, you know? There was no kids whining, no one was crying, no one was asking for permission. They just kind of did what kids do. And and it wasn't just the kids themselves, but also the adults and the administration who ran the small school that we taught English at. And that was just really refreshing for me personally because I think a lot of my frustrations of living in the United States and also just being in college in general and anyone our age really is just a lot of unauthentic people and a lot of um, facades being put up. And so for me, it was just really refreshing to see genuine people doing really genuine things. All right, so this is our our last day teaching. Or actually, no, I think we might teach tomorrow as well. And today's lesson is animals. So we're gonna teach them seven animals in English. And right now they're writing down what's on the board. And so far, it has been a challenging experience because you're not exactly sure what you're working with. So if you're trying to teach them numbers, you're, you're not even sure if they can conceptualize what three things are yet because they're such little kids. And so I kind of overestimated for that starting these lessons, but um, so far it's been great and these kids are super sweet. Our job was to teach them professions and jobs, so like lawyers, doctors, engineers, etc. And so before I even began the lesson, um, I, I listed out five occupations in Spanish and then we translated them to English and I said a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a farmer, and a teacher. And I included a farmer specifically because the community that we were in, I guess let me give you guys a little background. We were in the middle of Guatemala, which is an indigenous, where a lot of indigenous people live. It's called Tecpan and a lot of the small pueblos around it. And so I included farmer because Guatemala is very agricultural based. And so when I began this lesson, I said, all right, raise your hand if you want to be a lawyer. Maybe like two hands shot up. If you want to be a doctor, maybe another two hands. But when I said, raise your hand if you want to be a farmer, almost, I would say a good like 90% of the class raised their hand. And then when I said teacher, another 95%, like those same students all raise their hand again. And that just kind of, that was really mind blowing to me to think that someone would want to be a farmer instead of say a doctor or an engineer or a more more well respected profession as most people in the United States would consider. But it makes sense because these kids, I mean, they like what they're exposed to, right? So if their parents are farmers, which a lot of them were, if they're around teachers a lot, it just kind of makes sense for these students to want to be farmers, for them to want to be teachers. And to me, that was really inspiring because it, it to me, it meant that they want to continue in their community and they want to continue, I guess, their livelihood. But it was it also present, presented a very, I guess you could call an ethical dilemma because one of the main concerns was just up to what point is volunteerism a good thing up to what point are you helping kids versus destroying their community because i'm here exposing them to what it's like to be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer or any other profession that's not a farmer not a doctor i mean not a farmer not a teacher but at the same time i'm like encouraging these kids to leave their communities and then that kind of makes me think what exactly will happen to this community then this this community based in tradition and a lot of culture obviously and so it's it's just one of the things that 
we kind of debated amongst us who were their volunteers. Mm. They don't have internet in their classroom. They have computers and they teach them to use Excel and things of that sort, but they don't actually have internet on them. So I was thinking, what if I were to come in and put internet on these computers and these kids can explore whatever they want to explore on the internet, obviously expand their horizons. Yes, it could give them more opportunity, but at the same time, it's kind of at the cost of preserving their own culture, their own tradition and their own community. It was, it was just something that I'm still kind of struggling with, you know, to what point am I actually helping and to what extent am I actually damaging these communities? And I think I've come to the conclusion that opportunities should be available to everyone, no matter where they're at and no matter where they come from, and they should have the right to choose whether or not they want to take that opportunity. And that's, that's even that statement within itself, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thought to grasp with because essentially what I'm saying is that these kids deserve to have the opportunity to leave and explore and obviously build a better life for themselves, but it's, it's a better life based off of my own definition. If I were to show you guys a photo of say their bathroom or their sink or anything like the front of this school, your average American, your average Westerner, your average person in a well-developed country might be first inclined to think like, wow, these kids don't have an actual street, they don't have internet on their computers, their bathrooms are really small, they must really hate their lives, they must be so miserable, I feel so bad for them, right? But Guatemala taught me that that is definitely not the case, and not just Guatemala, but my work with Face It in Mexico, it's... The, these kids and these people and these families, they're not, they don't feel bad that they don't have running hot water or anything of that sort. All those things and all those perceptions are first world American. That's like a first world mindset, you know what I'm saying? And so these kids, they're still really happy. I would say way more happier than a lot of people here in the United States with all the complexity that is in that seemingly simple life. And so it's just it, moving forward, I'm still kind of wrestling with that idea of to what extent am I actually helping and how would this be beneficial? Another thing to, I guess to take in mind is just the term global citizenship and how by potentially helping one of these kids achieve more opportunities, you're helping them shape them into a global citizen, someone who thinks beyond the parameters of their own home, of their own community, of their own country. And so that's also very valuable within itself. And if I can help bring this and help someone experience what it's like to be a global citizenship or a global a global citizen obviously that's something that i would love to do but obviously there's a lot of pros and cons to everything another really important thing and something that i'm still thinking about is the power of influence particularly in our media here in the united states so one of my good friends luis once told me that you know someone like kanye west or an artist or anybody in the music industry or in hollywood in particular has a more influence than anyone in politics and to me that initial thought was crazy because how can someone who writes music have more influence than say a united states senator and I've come to realize that there is a lot of truth in that because inherently music people and artists are the ones who narrate the culture. They're the ones who are at the front lines of what's important and what's trending, not just in politics, but in anything, in everyone's aspect. You know, people know when Kanye West tweeted something and not everybody knows if Trump pulled out of some agreement with some foreign country. You know what I'm saying? And all of this was reiterated again when I was in Guatemala when these two girls were coloring um, one of those coloring books from the Disney movie Frozen. And when I asked them, what is the name of the girl that they were painting? And they said, oh, Elsa. Like, of course it's Elsa. And then there was a male, the male character in the movie Frozen. And I didn't even know his name. I said, what's his name? They said, Kristoff. And to me, that was just insane, you know, the impact that artist and Hollywood has around the world. And so I guess moving forward with my own career path, taking this into consideration, I'm not really sure what I want to do now. It just kind of really made me reevaluate my future aspirations and my future goals, because up until this point, it's always been I want to join public service and government and anything of that nature. But now it's like, hmm. There's more out there than what I initially thought. Overall, ending thoughts on Guatemala. I had an amazing time with a lot of the other scholars and what we learned. And more than anything, the people that we were able to interact with and learn from. And to me, that is the beauty of travel. And that is, I guess that, that, that should be 
anyone's main objective when going anywhere beyond their home is just what can you learn from the people around. I guess to end, I just wanted to really emphasize how grateful and how humbled I am by this experience and the fact that I'm able to have a lot of experience that it's a lot of experiences that involve travel and i know there are a lot of people out there who don't have the money or the resources or the time right now to do as much of exploring as i've been able to do this past year but i hope through my videos and whatever i can gain from wherever i'm at that others are able to take something from it as well and um on that note feel free to leave a comment like subscribe and um yeah thanks for watching